Give me a little bit of grease. I need to slow down. I'm so excited about making a lure, I keep forgetting to do things. That's not really a lure, but you know what I mean. I'm aligning my my block here with this post so that it's straight up and down, which should make it spin straight. Alrighty. Switch, there we go. I'm using my power strip to turn it off and on. Okay, let me get my chisels out. Running my hand along that board does not feel good, so I'm going to put a glove on. That part's flat. That part's flat. So we're real close. I'll just keep going until that pencil mark's gone. That's a little bit undersized, but that's all right. I want this to be three inches long. Okay, and then I want to go an inch and a half, so halfway, before I start my taper. One thing you can do to make sure you don't over, overdo it is you can carve down to the to the uh, minimal size that you want right here I want to go down to 0 0.8 and that's a little bit too deep so what I'm going to do is I'm just not going to carve quite down to that depth All right, now we're gonna sand it. I'm gonna use some 180 grit uh, belt paper. It's time to part it off of there. All right, I got these little nubs on there, but I'll, I'll take the uh, belt sander and sand those flat. All right, now we need to swap out our chuck here. 
what I need to do is drill a, a hole all the way through the center and uh, it'd be best if I had a longer bit but I don't so um, I'm using a 5 30 seconds inch bit for that so we'll put it in as long as we can Highly recommend getting a longer bit because I'm not, it's not lining up just like it should. So, all right, I ran into a little snag having my holes aligned, uh, drilling from both directions on my piece, and I wanted to uh, pass along to you what I found out about that and why it was doing that. There's a couple of things that are key when you're when you're doing this. One is that your drill bit is perpendicular to the plane, to the to bottom plate here. And the way to check that is to take a square and set it on your plate flat and then make sure that your bit is aligned with that piece, okay? The second thing has to do with the bit itself. You know, I had talked about getting a longer bit, but that really wouldn't have solved my problem 100% because these bits flex you can you can see me flexing it just a little bit and with this wood i've got these grains let me get in closer here we've got the grain running this way and so you've got a dark piece of wood and then you've got a light piece of wood and the darker piece is a little bit harder piece of wood and the lighter is softer and so as i'm drilling right down the middle of one of those hard pieces that bit wants to kind of bend one way or the other taking the path of least resistance it's trying to get into the softer wood so the other thing you can do is you can get yourself a you can get yourself a sharper bit if you're using a dull bit it's going to want to turn every time if you've got a nice sharp one and you go really slow it'll drill through that harder piece of wood more straight so after some work, I did get it to go all the way through. It's not really pretty on the inside, but after I put a bunch of super glue in there, it'll, uh, it'll be waterproof, so it's not a problem. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to inset a little pocket for a brass ticker, one of those flat pancake brass tickers. So what I've got here is a 5 16 inch bit, which is the same size as my ticker. And then I've put a little piece of tape on here as a depth gauge because I want that. I want that brass ticker to stick out past the wood just a hair so that when, when these pieces are hitting each other, it hits the brass and not the wood. I got myself a new tool here. This is a one inch spherical burr. This one's, uh, I think the heavy, um, Got it off of Amazon, but I'm going to use that to do the concave part. Oh yeah, that's like a million times easier. You can see where I've got my holes misaligned here. It's okay, I can fill that with a little bit of epoxy and fix that up. Not a problem. All right, step one, let's, uh, let's soak that inside. And go ahead and seal the outside as well. By the way, I just realized I didn't show you but um, I did um, take some sandpaper and do a little bit of hand sanding to kind of finish, finish that off a little bit. 
uh, give it a rounded edge, smooth out this uh, concave in the front. All right, now I'm going to put some more super glue in this end. I want that inside to be well sealed. You know, the outside's going to get some epoxy, but the insides. The inside's kind of is what it is, so. Especially since we did all that rough drilling in there, I want to make sure I get all the inside sealed really well. So I'm going to rotate it. I got it dripping out the bottom here. So it's going all the way through. All right, back with more super glue. And I say super glue, but I'm actually using this um, Instacure Super Thin. Soaks in really well. Alrighty, I've got a little bit of repair work to do here since I'm messed up on my drilling. I'm going to get a little bit of baking soda. I'm going to tilt this lure, or this uh, popper, what am I trying to say? Popping cork as much as I can. I don't really care if I close it up all the way here at the end because it would just be the, the end I'm working on. I'm going to touch that up with the drill. So some people might ask why, why make a wooden popping cork? Because they make a lot of styrofoam and plastic, that kind of thing out there. What makes a wooden popping cork superior to a styrofoam? Well, it's not buoyancy. I'm using poplar because of its durability and its ease to work with, but you probably, probably ought to use a more buoyant wood. But to me, one, there's sort of a nostalgia to me about wooden lures versus uh, your modern plastic ones. The other thing is it is a little bit heavier and so I think you can get a little bit further cast with it. The downside though to this weight and this buoyancy is that it won't hold as big of a bait on there. I'm using a um, quarter ounce jig head uh, sometimes. You know that's kind of at the limit of what this thing can hold up in the water. So it's not super buoyant but it does cast a long way. Some people say it makes a better, sa uh, better sound underwater with the clicking and everything. I don't know about that. I don't have enough experience with these to know if that makes a better sound or not. It does make a lot of noise, but I don't know if the quality of that sound is any different. Well, durability. I think these are a lot more durable than a styrofoam one. Especially made out of poplar, that's pretty, pretty solid. I just like making things out of wood. Except for sanding. I don't like sanding. There's a lot of that to do. So you see how that 
protrudes just ever so slightly. Because I'm going to put plastic beads and more brass tickers on the bottom. And when it clicks, I want it to hit right up against that and not damage the wood. So that kind of protects the wood a little bit. So I've got my box fan and an old filter, air filter for the air conditioner. I'll crank that up on high. The other thing I did is I put a toothpick in my hole so I got a little handle to hold on to. And we're gonna we're gonna give that a couple of coats of this filler primer so that the painted part is really smooth. What we want to do to get this smooth is to very gently sand over that just to even out the high and the low. When you start sanding over that, you can start seeing the little imperfections. You can keep sanding and painting and sanding and painting and you can get it looking like a race car. But you kind of have to decide what is good enough for you. Alright, so the first color we're going to put on there is, of course, opaque white. That will be our base and that's uh, mostly to make the... Uh, orange really pop. Now that our epoxy has cured, it's time for final assembly. For the through line, I'm using a 200 pound monofilament. And the exact one that I'm using is Cast King. And um, you need to make note of the 1.4 millimeter. And that comes into play when you're talking about your barrel crimps. I use a double barrel crimps that I got off of Amazon. I just bought a box like this. It's a variety pack, different sizes, but you need to make sure that it, it goes up to the 1.4 millimeters. The brass tickers I use, these are just uh, something I got from Bass Pro Shop. It's shortcut ticker. And uh, the swivels I also got from Bass Pro. These are size three, and we'll need those on each end. And then uh, for the beads, I looked high and low for some glass beads. I looked online, I looked in stores, I looked everywhere to find glass. But the problem I ran into is none of them had a hole big enough uh, for this size line. I even tried drilling through it with a special bit uh, and I just broke them every time. So 
I uh, settled on plastic and they seem to be working just fine. They make a lot of noise. And uh, the ones I'm using are by a company called H&H. &H. And uh, just as a bonus, they're orange, so it matches my uh, paint. So all we got to do is cut our piece uh, to whatever length you want. Um, I cut this to about 13 inches. Uh, you might want to play with that a little bit. Now, a lot of people use wire for the through piece, but uh, wire can bend. Even if you get a really stiff wire, it can bend and stay permanently bent. Whereas this monofilament, um, it's made to bend. So it's, uh, it's not going to kink on you and it's very strong. So you don't have to worry about uh, strength issue. So all we do is we're going to feed that through. Then we're going to put two plastic beads on the top. And then we're going to put our barrel crimp. And a swivel. And then we're going to fold it over like so. Okay, and then on the bottom, I'm going to put two brass tickers. And the reason you want the brass on the bottom is for weight, because you want this uh, popping cork to sit correctly in the in the water. So the weight needs to go on the bottom. And then one bead, and this bead really is meant to protect the whole assembly as it uh, as it clicks and it hits up against this uh, crimp. If I can get my hands to work. Swivel. Okay. You can adjust the length as you see fit, but at the end of the day, this is what you got. And uh, of course you crimp those really well. This, uh, give this a try. What I've got is a popping cork that I carved, a wooden one, and that's tied directly under the braid. And then I've got about four feet of 20 pound monofilament, and below that is a Senko uh, wacky rig. And uh, I'm gonna cast it over to this rock over here. There's a large rock that's submerged. And the water's really clear, but I'm going to fish it like I would a redfish or a uh, speckled trout and see if it works on bass. is that that popping cork will get their attention and then they'll see that that worm under it and go after it if not this is exactly the kind of uh, demonstration you'd get for a redfish Or a speckled trout, only you'd put a shrimp on there instead of a worm.